Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and today I thought we'd talk about how I ended up here, as your friendly neighborhood crazy typewriter person, with 17 typewriters. That's right, 17 typewriters. So my journey started in the spring of 2018 when I watched a little film called California Typewriter. Now, I thought this film was really cool after I saw it, and I was really interested in the idea of collecting typewriters, but I didn't really know how to get started or was motivated to start collecting such a strange and new thing to me. So I filed away the information and then got a phone call a few months later from a friend who just said, hey, do you want to get into typewriters with me? And I stupidly said yes. So now we've decided we want to get into typewriters. We want to start collecting them, repairing them, and making content with them. Well, we're going to need a typewriter. I like to say that my first typewriter was Caroline, my Smith Corona Corsair Deluxe, because she's the first typewriter that was actually all mine. But really, my first typewriter was a Sears Celebrity Power 12 electric typewriter named Jan. The day is September 6, 2018. The power goes out in our building and we decide to go exploring in an abandoned office of a retired professor. We find his extra cabinet within his old office and inside is sitting a lonely typewriter that nobody wants. And that's how we found Jan. We tore it apart and tried to make it work and after cleaning 40 years of grating grime out of that typewriter, we finally were able to get it to work for the first time. But now I want my own typewriter, and I've done some research, and I know that there's a difference between portable typewriters, manual typewriters, electric typewriters, and I definitely know that I want a small typewriter, and I want something that looks really cool. So I started looking on eBay. I had never bought a typewriter before, and this was my first experience. I found Caroline the Smith Corona Corsair Deluxe on eBay, put in a bid, and on September 9th, I won a bid at $59.99 plus shipping. And on September 14th, my birthday, this typewriter was delivered to me. I named this typewriter Caroline because I, I don't really know why I named it Caroline. It just kind of came to me. And now she's here and one of my favorite typewriters. So I don't know anything about typewriters at this point beyond having two of them. We've made a couple of videos with them at this point, and I'm in a class where we're making production pieces and media content around a specific niche topic, and I decide to make my topic typewriters. Well, we have to start an Instagram and a YouTube channel and write papers and articles about these things. I'm gonna need more than just two typewriters to make the content interesting on this YouTube channel I've just started. So on November 29th, I'm at my grandparents' house and what do I find in the garage but another electric typewriter. And this time it's David Henry, my 1957 Smith Corona electric typewriter. David Henry skips a couple lines as you're typing on him and he's a little dirty on the inside, but what's really cool about having this typewriter in my collection is it's actually the typewriter my mom learned how to type on and it's one of the typewriters that my grandparents used when they were both teachers. So now I'm labeled as the typewriter collector in the family. And on December 13th, my grandfather says to me, hey, uh, I think we have another typewriter in the basement. If you can find it, you can keep it. So, never one to turn down a challenge, I went on the hunt for the Royal KH 1934 typewriter that's now named Edgar. I found this typewriter, lugged it up the stairs, and brought him home to my dad who's a mechanic, and that's where I kind of learned a lot about typewriter repair. So this typewriter had unlinked keys, the platen was bumpy, it was really gross and grimy on the outside. We tore the thing apart, learned how it worked, and put it back together. And that was one of the greatest experiences I've had with typewriters because we had to take something from start to finish and learn how everything worked. And a lot of the skills that I learned on that first typewriter restoration are skills that I can now do on my own when I'm maintaining my own typewriters in my collection. So at this point, I have four typewriters, two electrics, two manuals, pretty manageable. I can keep them all in my room. And this all changes on December 25th, 2018, when I get two typewriters for Christmas. The first typewriter I unwrapped was this HH Elite Royal Typewriter named Huxley, and then I got this Underwood Model 6 named Claire. So I named Huxley after the author of Brave New World, and then I named Claire after Claire Underwood from House of Cards. Yes, I am that person. 
I love Huxley. He's one of my favorite machines because he's a go-to. He was in great, clean condition when I got him. I've never had to do any repairs to him. He's just a really solid machine. And then Claire has been one of those really surprising machines that was in rough shape when I got her. I had to learn how to reattach the draw band, how to link keys on that as well, but I've been able to use her for some really interesting craft projects and some interesting design things with typewriters on this YouTube channel, and she's been really cool to learn how to work with. So that's the end of 2018. I'm only a couple months into typewriter collecting and I have six typewriters. And then on May 15th, 2019, I'm in Virginia visiting my boyfriend's family and his grandmother says, hey, you have typewriters, right? I've got one in the garage, do you want it? And that's how I ended up with this 1950s Royal Quiet Deluxe typewriter, Diana. So this typewriter was in pretty rough shape when I got it, but I learned how to tear it apart and put it back together again tear it apart again because that's how you learn how to do a lot of these maintenance things when you're working with typewriters. And I was getting typewriters that were in kind of working condition that I didn't want to tear apart, but because Diana was a little rough when I got her, I decided it was okay for her to be my learning machine. So on June 17th, 2019, I was talking to a friend and he said, hey, I've got a typewriter and I'm moving, would you like to buy it off of me? And that's how I ended up with this 1936 Universal Underwood typewriter named Leon. I bought this typewriter for $25 off my friend. It was really musty smelling when I first got it, so I had to set it out, remove the ribbon and replace it, and I also changed the typewriter feet on this typewriter. Leon is one of those slow burn typewriters that I really didn't like when I first got it and started playing with it because I wasn't used to how a portable machine was working and I didn't like how it was all over the place, I didn't like how the carriage moved up and down, and I just really wasn't used to it as a typewriter. But as time has gone on, I really like Leon as a typewriter. He's actually really light and very portable, and I like having him on different projects to compare against different machines. So now it's July 6, 2019, and I'm dog sitting for a friend, and what do I get as payment? But, well, another typewriter. So this is Holden, my IBM Selectric 2, and what's really cool about Holden is he's actually a prop from the Netflix show Mindhunter. As you can see, he is labeled as props, and you can actually see Holden in Mindhunter Season 1 in Episode 10, and then in Season 2, Episode 1. And I was able to identify that it was Holden actually in the film besides the fact that it was bought in the prop house that served props to the show, is actually that he has this little lip up here in the front on his ruler that goes up on the end, and I was able to actually match that to a typewriter in the show, screenshot it, and show both of them together, and Holden is famous. Now what I really like about Holden is that it's a completely different typing process. The difference between portables and manuals is kind of noticeable. I think people who have a lot more typewriters than me would say it's definitely noticeable for them, but the learning curve between the two machines is pretty much the same. Electrics are a little bit different, especially the first two that I have. There's still some tension on the keys and they still look like a normal typewriter. But then you end up with an IBM Selectric and it's a completely different typing process. I really like how smooth the process is of typing on holding this IBM Selectric. I love how hefty it is, how cool it is that it was in a TV show, but mostly I just like that it's a different thing to add to my collection and that it adds a different flavor to the kind of typewriters I have. So not even two weeks later, I was in an outdoor flea market, Leak Dees flea market, and I found another typewriter. Uh, yeah, that's how I ended up here. So this is Louie, King Louie, my 1922 Royal 10 typewriter. When we were doing the restoration on Edgar, we weren't really sure what kind of typewriter it was. We thought because of its age, it was actually a Royal 10 typewriter. But doing some research, we found clearly it's not one of those. But after I learned about the Royal 10 typewriters, I learned about a little Stephen King film called Misery. And if you've seen Misery, there is a Royal 10 typewriter in that film, and it's actually a murder weapon. And because of this, I was fascinated with the idea of getting a Royal 10 typewriter and adding it to my collection. We were walking through the flea market on July 14th, 2019. I hadn't seen any typewriters all day, and in the last stall of the last row of this flea market, I see Louie over here. Now he was originally $45, but I was able to talk the seller down to $25, and then I had to carry this hefty typewriter across a field and get it into my car. 
Another thing that I really like about Louis is that because he's a Royal 10, he was also my 10th typewriter. So now I'm at double digits, and it's getting kind of scary. I shouldn't be allowed to have this many typewriters. I'm running out of room to put them places, but I'm having a lot of fun making content about typewriters on YouTube and posting on Instagram, and I'm learning a lot more about the typewriter community. So it's August 3rd, 2019. I'm in an antique store again. I'm dog sitting again. I don't know how this is related, but every time I dog sit, I end up with another typewriter. And I walk past a shelf in this antique store, and I find this typewriter. $25, perfect condition, and for some stupid reason, I said, eh, I'm good, I've got 10 at home. The next day, August 4th, 2019, I was the first person in line at the antique store to get this typewriter. It was in perfect condition, beautiful color. I had never seen any other typewriter like it, the Smith Corona Pacemaker from the 1960s, and I was just in love with it. So I named this typewriter after Dame Maggie Smith, because Smith Corona, Smith, Dame Maggie Smith, it made sense in my brain. And what you need to know about me is, yes, I love movies like Misery from Stephen King and House of Cards, but I also love Downton Abbey. So what I love about this typewriter is it's so consistent. It's the same thing that I love about my Royal HH Elite, and the same thing I love about that IBM Selectric. It's just the same thing every time you type on it. And some of my other smaller typewriters have little quirks every time you type on them, but Dame Maggie Smith is like so consistent every single time, and it's one of my favorite things about working with her. So I'd like to state for the record that the next typewriter is not my fault. So I'm already the crazy typewriter person in my family. Now I'm the crazy typewriter person at work. We got that first typewriter from work in our offices and everybody around me is kind of aware of the fact that I take typewriters home and I play with them on the internet. So my boss and mentor decided to give me one of his old typewriters for my birthday. So on September 16th, two days after my birthday, I walked into my office, my entire desk was decorated with like streamers and wrapping paper, and sitting upon my desk was a Smith Corona Classic 12, which I've named Webster. So Webster is one of my go-to machines. I use it for letter writing, for craft projects. He travels with me in my car. It's just one of my favorite typewriters because it's portable, but also very consistent, almost as consistent as one of the manual typewriters that's more like a desk set typewriter. So I'm just really honored to have this typewriter in my collection and to get to use it as much as I do. So at this point in my typewriter journey, I'm like 12, 13 typewriters in, and I discover Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace is like a black hole where all of your money goes, all of your time goes, and I don't know how you get out of it. I think you just stay there forever. So I was browsing Facebook Marketplace lazily on the afternoon of September 26th, and I see a post for a royal typewriter. It's like 10 minutes away from my house, and it's only $20. I've got that $25 cap. I think it's time for a new typewriter. You know, it's been at least a week. And I decide to go purchase this typewriter. 30 minutes later, I have this typewriter at my house and I realize that I'm in for a big project. Now, I try not to regret any typewriter purchases. I love all the machines I have in my collection, but there are some that are more fickle than others, and this one drove me crazy for so long. The first thing I noticed about this typewriter is that the draw band was completely snapped. And I thought that I could really easily solve this by just tying some string on it and tying it around the spring and we'd be fine. It took me like three months to figure out how to properly attach some semblance of a draw band from the spring onto the edge of the carriage to get the carriage just moving back and forth. And it still didn't work at this point. So I brought it home to my mechanic dad, and it took him like 10 minutes to figure it out, which was the most frustrating part of it. The case had actually found its way to like bend around some of the keys, and it was consistently and constantly pressing down the space bar. And this meant that the typewriter was always engaged typing that space bar, so none of the other keys would want to go, the carriage would be all over the place. It took him 10 minutes to fix it. And even though it's actually fixed now and the draw band's working on it, it's still one of those things that I just don't want to mess with as a person who collects typewriters because 
what happens if I break it or mess it up? I have to go through that whole repair process again. So it's definitely a typewriter that I have not played with as much because it's driven me so crazy. And I think that if you talk to typewriter people, you'll find that all, all of us have those kind of machines in our collections that we bought pretty cheap, we thought was gonna be an easy fix, and we've turned it into something that was so much more than we were expecting when we first got it. So I heard a joke the other day, and it was, by another typewriter collector and he said to me if you collect typewriters and you have a couple in your car make sure you lock your car because if you leave it unlocked you'll find that you end up with more antique typewriters in your car than you started with and i have found this to be so ridiculously true when it comes to dealing with getting free typewriters from people who have found out that you like to have typewriters in your home so I was just minding my own business and October 1st, 2019 came around and my boss said to me, hey, pull your car up. I've got something I want to put in your back seat. It was another typewriter and it was a behemoth typewriter. This typewriter is my Olivetti Linera 98 or so. It looked so strange and different. I had never seen any other typewriters like it on the Facebook group or on eBay, and I really wanted to repair it, but it sat for months because I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. And we decided to tear this typewriter apart, and we found that the internal spring was actually snapped, which caused the carriage to have no tension moving back and forth. It was a repair job that was way beyond me, and my dad actually helped me. We had to temper, untemper the steel that was wrapped around that spring, bend the spring back into place and replace it back inside of Orso the typewriter. And it, ju it just drove us crazy. It was such a weird repair job. It was hard to take apart. It was hard to get any pieces in there. And a lot of the typewriter designs are actually kind of difficult to get apart because they wanted people to have to buy specific typewriter tools. They wanted to look different than their competition. And that's, I think, probably what happened with this Olivetti typewriter. And it's kind of why it was so difficult to want to work on. Now, because this typewriter is massive, I decided to name it Orso because it is the Italian word for bear. And I just thought that was the best thing to name it because it really describes what the experience was working on this typewriter. So it's December 13th, 2019. It's been a while since I've had a new typewriter and I get what I can only describe as the typewriter itch. And that's when you've gone too long between getting projects on typewriters and you need a new one. So I was browsing Facebook Marketplace because that's the first place I go to find typewriters. And I found a posting for an electric typewriter, a manual typewriter, and a typewriter stand for $40. I messaged the guy and I was able to set up a meetup for the next day to actually purchase these typewriters and that's how I ended up with my 1940s L.C. Smith Corona typewriter named Weston and this beautiful Olympia Electric named Nora. So in the post, they actually did advise me that the electric typewriter wasn't working, but the other typewriter was in pretty good condition and the typewriter stand was pretty sturdy. The Smith Corona Weston was actually great. I didn't have any issues with him. He's had a couple issues skipping. Um, but some minor adjustments and I think he'll be fine. It's one of those typewriters that I can work on on my own and learn a little bit more about adjusting certain things on a typewriter. And it's been really great to advance my knowledge as far as that goes in learning how to maintain larger typewriters with small fixes. Now, when I saw the broken electric typewriter, I thought, oh, there's an opportunity for a bad craft. I thought that I could tear it apart and turn it into maybe an art display of the inside, the guts of a typewriter. And I let it sit for a really long time before even analyzing what was wrong with it because I just didn't know where to start on that art project. Then I tore it apart and found the only thing wrong with it was that the drive belt was corroded and like wrapped around the gears. So the drive belt is a little plastic rubber belt that's inside the electric typewriters and it just kind of keeps the keys moving and moves the whole machine and mechanism back and forth. I had never successfully done any repairs or adjustments on an electric typewriter, but I saw what was going on inside this typewriter, did some googling, and I found that you can actually replace the drive belt of an electric typewriter with O-rings. So I ordered some O-rings off of Amazon and I actually fixed this electric typewriter all on my own, all with my own Googling skills, and I'm really proud of it. This little typewriter is actually a great electric typewriter, way more consistent and just great to use than the other couple electric typewriters in my collection, except for the IBM Selectric. 
and I'm just so happy to have it in my collection because it's something I've repaired on my own. And I just think she's a beautiful little simplistic piece of typewriter history and I'm just so happy to have it working and have done it myself and I'm really proud of myself for fixing it. So a few months go by of this confidence of fixing typewriters and having this great collection, I decide to diversify and go into another antique store. Again, always a bad idea for me. So I went into an antique store, the same one that I bought Dame Maggie Smith at, and I found this little toy typewriter from the 1960s sitting in the corner for $12. And I had to have it. So this is Tom Hanks, my toy Tom Thumb typewriter from the 1960s. It actually works, which is great. I don't consider it one of my typewriter typewriters because that's how I get away with having a smaller number of typewriters. But you can actually type on this, it types in all caps, and it got me into the idea of collecting toy typewriters. I'm aware this is an issue for me. So then I decide, well hey, I've got one toy typewriter that works, you know what I really need? A second one. So I ended up on eBay looking at toys from the 1960s and 70s and I found this Buddy L Easy Writer typewriter from 1976 in orange and cream and I was able to buy that for under $25 and I decided, well hey, you know, I, this one would get lonely, it needs a friend. And now I have two working toy typewriters within my collection. So then I had two toy typewriters, I had 16 other typewriters, and on May 10th, I got the typewriter itch again. So I'm on Facebook Marketplace, I see a little Royal Heritage typewriter, and I think it's one of the most beautifully designed typewriters I've ever seen. I just want it so badly, and I message a seller and he's already sold it. So now I'm on the hunt for a similar design typewriter on Facebook Marketplace or on eBay, and I'm searching endlessly for this kind of design in typewriters. My mom goes and watches California Typewriter, the documentary, and comes to me and says, Hey Sarah, I think I want a typewriter. And she goes a couple days later and finds a Royal Lux typewriter, similar design to what I'm looking for, for about $30 listed on Facebook Marketplace, and buys it. And I decided, you know, that was the one that I wanted, it's okay, I'll still have access to it, it's the design that I wanted, but I can mess with it, and it'll be fine, she can have it, I can let go of this one typewriter. Well, it turns out that typewriter needed a lot of maintenance and took a couple weeks to figure out how to get it to work properly. Two days after she purchased it, this typewriter popped up on Facebook Marketplace for $12. And this is a Royal Futura 800. I've named him Lord Laird Fortune Covey after the designer of this typewriter. He designed a lot of Royal typewriters. And this is just one of my favorite typewriters to have ever purchased. It's beautiful. I like that I got it and it was perfect when I got it. And I just think that it was the right time for me to get this typewriter. Um, but it does mean that I have 17 typewriters in my collection and that's how I ended up here. So that's a little history about myself and my typewriters. I just love them so much. I'm so passionate about them. I love being able to make YouTube videos about them and have people watch them and be interested in this content and it really gives me great motivation to fuel the addiction and go buy more typewriters. I like that people who I know are getting interested in typewriters, there are new ways to buy typewriters, to repair them, there's all this information on the internet, and it's just a really cool hobby to have and a great environment to be part of. Every single one of my typewriters has a different personality, has a different weight to it, a different style, a completely different writing experience, and that's what makes me so excited about having so many diverse typewriters in my collection. I want to thank you guys so much for watching today and indulging me and in letting me talk about my collection for this long and watching me spiral mentally and financially into the typewriter hole. If you guys are interested in more typewriter content, definitely check out more videos on this YouTube channel. There's a lot of historical pieces, maintenance, cool crafts you can do with typewriters, and you can also follow us on Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I want to thank you guys so much for being here today and remind you that you're just my type. Writer.